TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is right here. This is the live channel. So right now I'm live and you didn't make it. Anything that I say that's revolutionary, which is a lot of stuff. I'm a generational mind here. It'll be made into a short and it'll be put here. Ty on cam, that's the YouTube guy. That's the YouTube channel. That's who does all the shorts and uploads all the missed video and any content. He puts it on here. Salute to Ty on cam. He got COVID right now, I think. So we wish he'd get better or something, man. Um, uh, this link will be down in the description, man. I want to get this to 250, man. Help, man. Go subscribe, man. Come on, man. Because, right, it, you know how shorts work. It'll move itself, but I, I want y'all to come. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, pause, first of all. Uh, Patreon. Patreon link down in the description. Uh, be nice if I could get this up there. Um... And that's it, right? Oh, the Discord. The Discord. Next week, I'm going to be on YouTube going live. So today is Sunday. So Monday and on, I'm going to be on YouTube going live during the day. I don't know. Um, during the day. So I'm going to be using the Discord a lot to do reactions and whatnot. It's going to be a part of my, you know. Anyway, let's get into this, man. The brutal rise of Albanian mafia in Europe. This came out four months ago, so I'm, it's guaranteed that I did not do it. And anything that it's I, a lucrative place hey, for two. Anything that I thought I couldn't be myself and reacting to, I ain't even do it. But now I'm off YouTube probation, so what's up? Let's get it. Europe is a lucrative place for two things. One is tourism, and secondly, it is a huge market for drugs. Mm. Legally, European countries are making billions from the earlier, and there are criminal groups in some of countries that are taking advantages of drug business. Okay. Without any doubt, Europe is among the best places to live in, but it is not 100% pure from these impurities. From criminal groups of Italy, Ireland, and Spain, there has been a huge influx of drug trade on the shores of Europe, and Albania is no exception. Being considered as Colombia of Europe, primarily due to the flow of drugs and crime organizations involved into this illicit domain. The country has always been prominent in drug trade. Albanian organized crime has been expanding in European markets for a number of years. The latter, known for their traditional prostitute activities, have started to enter increasingly intricate criminal networks. Naturally, the drug trade is what has propelled them up. Why are they showing Brazil? Or what is going away? The criminal food chain particularly in Wait the a minute. Is this San Francisco and continent's largest market where they are now well established. Additionally, Europol is that like was that Albania or where, where's Al okay. has identified the firm below the group's cocaine supply chain as one of the most active organizations involved in the trafficking of the drug. They are present at the two most significant ports in Europe, which accounts for this. So where does this Albanian speaking mafia success and growth originate from? Why is the Albanian Mafia more powerful and ferocious than it was before? What do we know about the drug trafficking through Albanian Mafia? You will get to know this and plenty more as the video will cover a variety of topics related to Albanian Mafia. It's a W intro. What, who, what page is this on? This is on Wanted Suspects? That's a W intro to a video. Like, I know I can drop a fire documentary. With all the documentaries that I've been watching, I just need a subject. <laughs> I know it's going I know I could. <laughs> so sit tight and be the judge of his brutal rise with us till the end of this video. However, before that, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video The Albanian Mafia. Here's also a quick reminder, YouTube, I don't condone or sensationalize anything. I'm here for educational purposes. And I'm in America. I'm acting on the media. That's the media. The common phrase for criminal groups based in Albania or made up of Albanians is Albanian organized crime or Albanian mafia. Albanian organized crime is present throughout the world, especially in Asia, the Middle East, and North and South America. I was about to say, you better say North America. The Albanians is very, very present in Chicago. 
the Albanian mafia engages in a wide range of illegal activities, such as the trade in drugs, weapons, and people. They are alleged to be in charge of a sizable portion of the $1 billion European wholesale cocaine market and to be the main suppliers of cocaine in many of the continent's major drug hubs, including London. The diverse criminal enterprises that make up Albanian organized crime are notable for the complexity and show a very high level of criminal prowess. More than 15 mafia groups rule organized crime in Albania. From as far east as Israel to as far west as South America, the Albanian mafia has monopolized a number of international associations. The main takeaway from these claims is that there is a close relationship between politicians and various Albanian mafia factions. I ain't gonna lie, that's one of the WS commercials that I ever seen because I was really getting into it. You know what I'm saying? He put that at a, a peak moment of interest that I. The Albanian mafia groups are hybrid organizations, meaning they frequently engage in both criminal and political activity, according to the Research Institute for European and American Studies, RIEAS. The Albanian Mafia is one of the most powerful criminal organizations in the world, combining traditional elements of organized crime, such as rigid internal discipline, clan structures, endogamic closure, marriage within the organization, and internal cohesion with more contemporary elements, like marriage within the organization. That's pretty important, right? At least for like when you go into court and whatnot, because you can't use your spouse as a witness to anything transnationalism, commercial imprinting, and a criminogenic culture of servitude. The enormous logistical capabilities and diversity of Albanian organized crime. Hold on, fam. You using a lot of big words. Hold on, go back. Commercial imprinting and a criminogenic culture of servitude. The enormous logistical capabilities and diversity of Albanian organized crime have made it easier for it to establish itself outside of the mother country and to meld with regional criminal organizations. Folks said like six words and it was a 300 words, 300 letters, I mean. The phrase Albanian Mafia may be used to refer to any number of Albanian American organized criminal organizations in the United States, including the Rudaj organization and the Albanian Boys, both of which have their headquarters in New York City. The degree of ties between Albanian American criminal or headquarters in New York City. The degree of ties between Albanian American criminal organizations and Albanian mafia organizations in Albania or Europe varies, ranging from a weak relationship to or independence from Albanian mafias in Europe to being effectively American extensions of European Albanian mafia organizations. Albania's geography, a plus point. A strategic location in the drug trade, such as the Balkans, where heroin is frequently transported, makes Albania particularly well positioned in the first place. Heroin frequently it's true. Geography is real important when you're trapping, allegedly. Like from what I've picked up through uh, educating myself, you do. He starts in Afghanistan, travels through Turkey, and eventually ends up in Albania. They can significantly enhance their revenues by using this method instead of cutting it, which reduces its purity. To give an example, their control over the Adriatic Sea and the Balkans allow them to export the drug to other markets. The latter was already charged with providing up to 90% of the commodities in Switzerland in the 1990s. In the past, the Balkans, which are in the center of southeastern Europe, have been a crucial conduit for the transit of drugs, particularly heroin imported from the east and trafficked throughout Europe. Albania in particular became a significant country in the region for heroin trafficking after the fall of communism in 1991. With its central location, extensive coastline along the Adriatic and Ionian seas, and approximately to Italy and Greece, the nation swiftly became a major transit point for heroin, arriving from the east before it reached the European Union. The nation is well recognized for both illicit cannabis growing and heroin trafficking. For more than 20 years, Albania was regarded as one of Europe's top outdoor cannabis producers. This practice was accepted by the powerful. Lazaret, a town in South Central Albania, was one of the nation's cannabis growing epicenters from 2000 to 2014. 
In spite of the fact that criminals from other parts of the country could rent land in the town and grow their own crop, the village became a secure location for cannabis growing. In addition to Lazaret, the Dukagini Highlands, and the Shokdor municipality of northern Albania were a notorious location for cultivation. The mafia's move. Okay. Although both locations experienced a police chapter two cultivation, the mafia's move. Although both locations experienced a police crackdown in 2014, the fight against cannabis growing remained far from done. In fact, cannabis production grew across the nation at a previously unheard of rate in 2016. This scenario caused worry, and in response to criticism from both inside and outside Albania, the police and other institutions stepped up their efforts to combat the problem, bringing cultivation rates to historic lows over the previous five years. Large-scale illicit cannabis growing combined with long-standing experience in heroin trafficking has given Albanian criminal organizations critical knowledge and power. As a result, these organizations started the year 2000 by getting involved in the lucrative business of trafficking cocaine. The beginning was modest. The Italian Mafia and other criminal organizations at random hired criminals from Albania to transport cocaine from ports across the continent and distribute it in the streets of European capitals. However, Albanian criminal organizations quickly began to develop the know-how and techniques necessary. This dude, the police, he got a lot of information, don't he? Or is he reading something? To advance up the value chain. Or you know what? He could just be a great, uh, 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 a great, what's it called? A great journalist. Could have just went and read it, did all this research and, you know. A lot of these stuff that he's saying is probably public knowledge. And eventually become significant distributors. They did this by obtaining cocaine directly from Latin America and then delivering it to Albania and some of the major ports in Western Europe. As that That's common, cut out the middleman and get it directly. Lowest prices that way, right? Allegedly. Establishing distribution networks across the continent and beyond. These criminal organizations have efficiently moved upstream toward the source, adopting the Italian Mafia model. Their brokers are located in Colombia and Ecuador, two key producing Good. nations for cocaine. The fact that these organizations had also begun to establish cells and increase their operations in significant cities throughout the United Kingdom, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, and other countries among others, helped them in their activities. As a result, they were able to establish and manage the entire chain from planning large direct shipments. The Netherlands, huh? Everybody just in turn the Netherlands out, man. I ain't never ever heard nothing bad about the Netherlands about 10 years ago. Now it's just... You know what I'm saying? Netherlands, Netherlands reminds me of that girl who went to private school her whole life and then finally went to a, 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 a college, a real college, you know what I'm saying? And just turned herself out and turned into a thot. It's crazy. Mints from Latin America to street distribution across Europe, giving themselves more authority and increasing their notoriety. According to their financial records, this business strategy has brought in millions of euros in revenue, money that is typically laundered in Albania and other countries where they do business. Conquering UK's cocaine market. <laughs> Since they began learning from their mentors 15 years ago, they have transformed from smugglers to sought after drug suppliers, shunning violence in favor of forging powerful networks of relationships. This is how Albanian criminal organizations operate, according to the National Crime Agency, NCA, a British national security agency they control a significant portion of the country's cocaine market, which is worth a total of roughly six billion pounds. The establishment of so-called county lines, capillary networks used to transport. Before Curology, I used to wake up, wash my face, walk. Yeah, okay, they might have all, the Netherlands might have always been important, but they weren't always like in the news though. You get what I'm saying? They had morals. <laughs> They're behind closed doors important. Now it just seems like they just, come on, man. You just real sassy. For drugs commercial. around the United Kingdom and from major cities into coastal and inland provinces has also been favored by Albanian criminal organizations, according to the NCA. Criminal organizations from both abroad and within Albania employ these trade routes. 
the oh, police look at this guy. This is the Vice guy. I've seen this Vice show. Oh no! I, yes, I have. I remember. Yes, I have. I've seen this Vice episode. It is a series of operations around the region in October 2021 alone, arresting 1,468 people, seizing drugs and money worth more than two million pounds, and taking 49 firearms from an armory. Government statistics show that organized crime damages the UK's economy over 37 billion pounds annually. This statistic, however, only provides a partial picture of the situation because it ignores the money that has been used to launder criminal proceeds and then sold to legitimate businesses. But how did the Albanian Mafia succeed in making a name for itself in the UK's criminal underworld? Their settlement's history dates to the 1990s and is frequently linked to the Kosovo War which resulted in the displacement of over a million people between 1998 and 1999. Thousands of Kosovars fled the nation in search of safety in neighboring and European nations. The vast majority eventually settled in Tirana, Albania. British investigators claim that during those years, many of the refugees who crossed the border into Britain in search of an asylum were Albanian citizens. Okay, so he just wrote something up, then just played the slideshow behind it. Who claimed to be caught? Still very informal, because I've seen this picture six times. Savars, in order to gain preferential treatment when being received. Today, there is no univocal number of Albanian citizens residing in the United Kingdom. In 2019, the National Statistics Office released a rough estimate, claiming that about 47,000 Albanians are residing in the country. 47,000 Albanians are residing in the UK? I think that number's a little off. I would, I, it ain't even a hundred K. Isn't there a heavy population of Albanians in the UK? Have it, it feel like more than 47,000. And 29,000 Kosovars. However, according to the British government databases, in the year of the pandemic alone, 3,071 citizens of Albanian origin requested political asylum in the country. What they have done is that they have created an Albanian-speaking satellite community in the United Kingdom, parallel to the one established in other neighboring states, such as in the Scandinavian. This video is four months old. countries after the Kosovo crisis, says Tony Saggers, former head of the anti-drug section of the National Crime Agency. From such satellite communities, Albanian criminal groups have then started recruiting new fellow citizens among the newly arrived in the UK, who were experiencing social marginalization and were struggling with economic resources being exploited in the agricultural, construction, or industrial sectors. Cocaine, prostitution, and human trafficking are the illicit businesses that help the Tirana bosses build their empires. The Albanian criminal groups have enriched themselves patiently. A typical British drug dealer wants to make money as fast as possible and at any cost. A typical drug dealer at all, in any sense of the word, want to do that, right? Explains Tony Saggers. Instead, Albanian criminal groups have learned that the profit margins are high enough to allow them to have the prices of the substance at the sale without decreasing the quality. Drug transportation and money laundering. Chapter three. The Albanian mafia has been successful in positioning its accomplices inside the ports, particularly in Rotterdam, Antwerp, and Algeciras, allowing them to easily avoid security inspections. Operations aren't always uncontrolled though. In April, Belgian law enforcement officials successfully stopped and seized the shipment of 27 tons of cocaine from South America that, at an average price of 30,000 euros per kilogram, would have generated almost 800 million euros in sales. I always said, man, sometimes they gotta let them, sometimes everybody's corrupt. You get it? Like in this business, like there's a little corruption everywhere. So sometimes they gotta give those corrupt people a small, a small part. 800 million might seem a lot to us. It is a lot, it's almost a billion. But that's small when you making 40 billion a year or so, or 90, 100 billion a year or something like, y'all can have that little eight. See you for another little eight, eight, 800 million dollar seizure in, in three months. This is the most significant anti-drug trafficking operation the nation has ever conducted. Investigators have been working to apprehend people in charge of the drug shipments since April, and some Albanian families are reportedly the subject of an investigation. 
Tony Saggers has been investigating an extensive number of cases throughout his career and has witnessed various ingenious methods of drug concealment. Albanians usually carry cocaine hidden in products such as bananas, pineapples, and dried fruit, but also metal or wooden objects. Cocaine is a malleable product that is easy to extract, clean, and store once it reaches Europe, he explains. The Albanian drug gang Compania Bello which operates in various European nations and came under the scrutiny of investigators with the Los Blancos operation in September 2020, uses two distinct ways for the transportation of drugs, the system and the dry as defined by investigators. The criminal portfolio of the Albanian mafia is varied and involves different methods that they use to launder their money. As a result, tracking down their assets is very difficult. According to Saggers, they keep them well hidden from our eyes. According to British investigators, the most common method that they use consists in exporting cash abroad, especially at home. They do this by using well-known money transfer services like Western Union or MoneyGram, which make it simple to send money without disclosing private information. Often, the workers running the money transfer service are bribed and hundreds of thousands of pounds can be converted into small volumes of euros, which are then smuggled out of the UK, explains Sackers. Faithfulness great economic resources, violence, and ruthlessness when needed, but also direct contacts with South American producers, show that Albanian criminal organizations have the right skills to impose themselves in the geopolitics of organized crime. But how far can they go? Do let us know in the comment section. They can go as far as they like. <laughs> Let's be real. This, this, this game will never end. Ever. You know what I'm saying? This game will never end. The smarter the FBI, the DEA, the, the Interpol, local authorities, the smarter they get, the smarter the drug dealers will get. It's going to never end. It's just me being honest, man. Tell you, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm going.